Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we will continue free switch installation. In the part one of free switch installation video, we have learned how to get token from signal wire and how to download free switch code from GitHub, compile and install it. Today we will continue with post installation tasks. We need to set permission, set system script, etc. that we will go through them step by step. So let's get started by setting ownership and permissions in FreeSwitch. And when we install FreeSwitch from source code, by default it will be installed in the USR local FreeSwitch. So you will see the local USR local free switch is the default pass for the installation of free switch when you are installing from source. Uh, by default, the ownership is root because uh, or the user that you have installed that one. I'm sure most of you are using root like me for the installation. So for example, if I go to the free switch and if I run ls-alh, you can see the owner of the files are root. We don't want that, right? Because we don't want that user to be, uh, or the process to run as root, or the owner of the use uh, the files to be root. We need to restrict to a user. In order to do that, we need to first create a group and create a user for free switch. Uh, by the way, this is this is my GitHub. I mentioned in the uh, first video. The link will be in the description and. Uh, you can go step by step. I mean, what I'm explaining here, everything is here. So we are in the post installation task and set ownership and permission. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to go to the CD USR local, create a group, create a user free switch, and then we set permission of the USR local free switch to the new user that we have created, and the name is free switch. And then we give it actually read, write, and execute access to this group. So in order to do that, you, you can just copy and paste here from my GitHub. OK, permission uh, set. So in order to ensure, yes, in order to ensure that, we can go to the free switch and run ls-alh. And then you can see the owner of the files our free switch. The next step is to configure systemd for free switch in order to be able to use the systemctl command to stop, start, disable, or enable the free switch web service. When you are installing free switch from source code, uh, there is a sample file in the source code that you can uh, copy and use that, but that didn't work. That didn't work for me, at least for. Uh, Debian 11 and free switch 1.10 that I'm using it. I mean the default configuration didn't work. So I have uh, changed some configuration files uh, for the systemd and I put it in my GitHub. So if you follow that, it should work for you. If you have any other suggestion or any other uh, actually systemd configuration that works, that's great. You can put in the comments and I will check and add to the uh, wiki as well. So systemd is uh, actually a file. It's very easy. We can just uh, open the file, edit the file, copy the information here, and then we have that uh, system system deconfigured. So I will just copy, and uh, let me just open the file. You can use any file editor like Vime, or if you are using Windows, even you can connect your WinSCP and edit the file. Vime etc systemd system free switch dot service so i open it and i copy the content of the system d here and i'm saving it in order to uh, actually you need to reload the daemon so we run the command system ctl let me just clear it system ctl daemon reload now we are able to actually stop, start, or check the status. So we can use the system CTL start free switch to start the free switch service. 
or we can check the status by system CTL status free switch. And as you can see, it's running. Also, uh, you want to enable the service. So system, system CTL enable free switch. Because if you do not enable the free switch service, when you reboot or restart your PC, then uh, the free switch won't run automatically. The next step is to configure bash profile for FSCLI tool. FSCLI uh, tool is a actually interactive console to work with free switch. It connects via event socket to the free switch, and then we can get the status of, for example, the uh, phones, a lot of information, the version, and we can interact with the free switch. We will see how we can connect to the FSCLI first, and then why we need the bash profile for that. So first we want to learn what is FSCLI. It's a console to interact with the free switch. By default, it's installed in the USR local free switch. That's the default path that we have installed our switch, free switch. And then we have a folder bin. In the bin, you have a, as you can see, you have a, a command FS underline CLI. To run it, you can put dot S slash FS underline CLI. And you are connected to um, free switch console. Here the commands are actually the uh, commands for the free switch. They are not your Linux shell, they are the free, it is free switch shell, I want to say. You can, you can enter the help to see what type of commands do we have. Or for example, here uh, you can see all the uh, conversations or anything happened in the system. As you can see, because it's a, in a, a cloud environment, a lot of people wants to uh, hack me. Of course, this is something that there is, this system is not connected to nothing, so they won't get anything. But as you can see, you can see all the logs in this console. To exit the console, you can uh, enter three dots, and it will exit the console. So, of course, every time you want to run the FSCLI, we can come to this uh, path, USR local free switch, and then run the command as I did it right now. Uh, in order to make it more convenient, I prefer to create a bash profile for it. Here you can see the bash profile. And why we need that? Because then, for example, even if I'm in another folder, for example, if I'm in another folder right uh, like root, if I type fscli, now the command is not found because the command is not there. But what I want to do, I want to uh, create a bash profile so that I will be able to run FSCLI from everywhere. So I create bash profile. And then I will add the pass of the free switch to my environment. And I'm saving it. So now, uh, after I have done this, I need to log out login once. So I will log out from, I will exit from my consoles so that, that that bash profile can apply and then I log in again okay now where I am I'm for example in the root but if I run FS CLI I'm able to connect to the console that's the usage of the bash profiles okay and the final step in installing a DNS caching uh, package installing an entropy source and a automatic time synchronization package these uh, steps are not mandatory, I want to say, but uh, it's a standard um, a step that you need to apply. I will explain why we need each of them. I have provided the commands that you need to install the DNS caching, uh, uh, entropy source, and automatic time synchronization here. You, ju you can just copy and paste in your console to install them. Uh, why we need the DNS caching is because uh, every time that we want to have a name resolution. We don't need to go back to a, a public DNS server, and it will cache actually the DNS. For entropy source, for entropy source, we need to uh, generate SSL, and some Debian's do not have the enough capacity, or they are to generate that actually uh, to generate that unique uh, string. So this will help them to generate that unique X, a string for usually when you are creating a SSL certificate. And automatic time synchronization, as you know, the time is very important in the telephone system and real-time communication. So with the installing of uh, this package, 
the system will automatically sync the time with the UTC. So in order to complete this step, you just need to copy paste these commands in your console. These commands will install the package, start and enable the service so that when we are restarting the uh, system, this service starts automatically. So I'm not entering them again. You can enter yourself and if any issues, you can uh, put a comment. That's it. That's the installation of the free switch. This was the post installation video. In the next videos, we will learn uh, what are the directory and file structure in the free switch, and we will start configuring the free switch by registering the phones, registering gateways, and creating dial plans. Thank you for watching.